What's up, guys? Welcome to the Honest Tattooer Podcast. My name is John Massa, and this week we have a bunch of guests in the house, and I'm super excited. But as always, Matt Triano in the house. Hey, how you doing? G Money. Let's pop it on back. And our two very special guests. So we always start off with saying your name, where you're from, how long you've been tattooing, and what kind of tattoos you like to do. I am Delphine Neustoy. Uh, I'm from the south of France. I used to be in London for 12 years and I tattoo since 19 years and I do a lot of stuff, uh, mostly known for my brushwork, uh, black work and dot work realism. But yeah, black only. Black. Black, black, Like black. my soul. Dark. <laughs> <laughs> my name is uh, Alex Haber. I've been a uh, tattooing slash apprenticing at Manhattan Tattoos now for uh, five months. I'm learning and the process of learning uh, under Nick Jones. Shout out to Nick, fantastic mentor, as well as his uh, wife, Shakira, and uh, another artist uh, at the shop, uh, Brick Hangel. Right now I'm learning all the fundamentals with regards to line and shading and color. I'm learning black and gray realism right now. We're like working towards getting to that and then hopefully eventually get to trash polka. That's the style that I'm Cool, man. Well, cool. <laughs> Dude, five months into it. Honestly, Thanks. that's... Uh, yeah, I'm, again, I'm probably the freshest meat you've had on the show, right? No, I think we definitely have had people that never tattooed ever before. So uh, I think... You know what? It reminds me of... Remember the guy we, we talked to at the Hudson Valley show that we thought was a tattooer? And he just had to be like a guy who was helping out around there. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I'm, I'm a teacher. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. That was, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I it's pretty surreal five months and for the entire five months and before trying to find an apprenticeship, I uh, was listening to this, trying to get, learn as much about the industry and just about tattooing in general. Like this has been one of my main sources of online information with tattooing. And I wouldn't think that five months I would be on here. So it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Oh, all. Dude, man. Thanks cool. for coming through. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, of course. What do you want to talk about today? Oh man. I feel like I've had such a, Fun week. I was telling uh, Gabe about it last night, actually. I was saying, lately, I've been tattooing back-to-back -back just things that I really love to tattoo on people that are really fun to just tattoo and just to be around. And, like, tattooing is, of course, is making art and it's making all these things. But overall, it's, like, something that there's moments about it where I feel like I'm in like one of those special moments where I get to like, Oh man, I feel like I'm constantly tattooing friends and doing cool tattoos. You know, it's like, you know, it's, it doesn't happen all the time in, in your career. It happens through like waves, you know, yes. where it's like, Oh man, everybody I'm tattooing is super fucking cool. And just people I want to hang out with. Does that ever get distracting though? Cause uh, I've, um, I've had a couple friends volunteering to be Guinea pigs at the shop that I'm at and, you know, under, adult supervision, if you will. My mentor is watching <laughs> yeah. me uh, tattoo all my friends, but you know, friends of friends. So, you know, we're cracking jokes or talking music or whatever. Does it ever get distracting? I found that one exercise I do when I'm practicing at home, actually, is while I'm practicing my line work and drawing, I actually call up somebody on the phone, whether it's a friend or family member to practice ta like tattooing and talking, because I feel like that's part of the job. In it's, a way. it's kind of like this. I've been doing it for long enough that I no longer really think about it too much. Okay. It just kind of just happens. It's like driving stick. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like driving a stick. Like, I, I don't really have to, like, have that level of focus. Like, you're five months into it. I'm 17 years of it, into it. So it's like, we just, it's like, you don't have to think to breathe. You're just excellent at it. You just were born with that ability, you know? So it's like over time, when you do something a lot and a lot and a lot and just countless hours, I remember days where I just, I had to really super like tone out the room. Now I feel like mm -hmm. being part of the room creates more energy for me to work in yeah. and yeah. to really, I love the situations like that when we're tattooing, it just creates a good flow. But to take, like today, for example, I had, I was doing something, I was doing the scales, freehand scales on a snake. To do all those scales, your level of focus has to really tone in. You have to like dial it in. Yeah. There's no like, it's not like just, oh, I'm just packing black and whip shading some stuff. Like you really got to be like, <sighs> you were quiet today. Yeah. You were quiet today. That's like, for sure. You, there's not a lot of talking. Every single oh, yeah. one is just one real super hyper 
focus moment. So, yeah, I feel like with consistency, always having to be in mind, it's like you, I feel like with anything with consistent, like uh, with what you were tattooing, I feel like there's a rhythm to it and just like talking in the middle of it or doing something in the middle of it could completely throw you off. It'll break concentration. Yeah. And like, you know, it's crazy. Like today I had a kind of like a rough personal day, you know, I had some, got some like news I didn't really like, and it it threw me off because it was in the middle of tattooing. I don't know if you ever had that happen. You're like tattooing, you get a a message from a loved one, from a friend, and it had maybe something that's going to just throw your game off. Like it breaks your psyche, you know? And then, you know, as I'm working, I'm like, fuck, dude, I really got to fucking focus on what the fuck I'm working on because this is important too. So it's like sometimes finding moments in tattooing where you get to really just like (sighs) go back to your place of like focus, you know, you can kind of break that moment where you're like outside circumstances can affect your mood your anything it's like get the fuck back to work deal Mm -hmm. with those things later you know you have to kind of like be here in the moment and being here in the moment is one of the hardest things to do that's all like yoga be here in the moment when you work out be here in the moment you know Riding a roller coaster. Be in the moment, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think it's like crazy with like with all the shit with uh people going under anesthesia to get tattooed. It's like you're avoiding being uh, here in the moment, yeah. my guy. Yeah. Oh so, my god. Yeah, I, I've heard you mention that you're you're you don't approve of such a practice. Of course. I really not. I really don't care. People can do whatever they want to do. <laughs> I think it's lame. <laughs> I, I think it's lame it's super lame like yeah, don't ever so. like if we meet at a party like don't ever admit that to me <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm never gonna be like oh cool bro i'm gonna be like that's fucking lame bro like, <laughs> but all right you, so next but, person i'm gonna talk to like have you ever had somebody though that was squirming or screaming so much that you almost kind of wish that they went under for the tattoo like has that ever crossed your mind mm. No, so you know what? There are people that kind of like, I would say like overplay like a pain factor by being like kind of like jittery or, but usually it usually takes just some quick like, hey, like, quit stop, it, quit it, stop yeah. fucking moving. Yeah. Like everybody That's does all this. they need. Yeah. I, it's but, like a little, like a little, like a little, like a verbal pow pow, you know? It's, it's just a, like, psh, have get a back little, in line. Have a little shot of shut the fuck yeah, up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> one, 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 Let me pull these lines because you're going <laughs> to fuck me up. For real. Uh, you see, for me, I have a totally different approach because I used to do very heavy black and people would come for that. They come for the pain and we'd end up like a session where the person didn't cry or didn't have like that release wasn't a good session. So for me, for a long time, for a lot of years, it was, that was the quest. They, they want, they came to me for that. So, so actually, I'm glad you woo. brought that up because I thought about this in the past. I've seen tattooers who intentionally go hard yep. and to make it more painful. How does that heal? So for me, I wouldn't go harder. It's more like I would push on the length of the session. So I, I would know at the three hour mark, they'd be done. And then you'd start having like the little trembling, the tremors, you know, and all of this and be like, do you want to, I'm very, very gentle, but there's only so much gentleness that you can do when you're doing black work, heavy black work with like 25 or 39 mag, you know, there's, there's only so much that you can do. And, but because I mostly have women who went through very heavy stuff, I'd be like, okay, how do you feel? Do you want to carry on? Do you want to carry on? And they'd be like, okay, Yes. I'm like, okay, we're going on this right now. And then it'd be the, this entire thing of being like, okay, you can do it. Go on. And they'd be like crying and they have this release. It heals really well if you really, really, really take care of the customer. And I've noticed that the customer, the customers who I didn't take care of, or there was like friction or there wasn't this, this will for healing themselves inside it's very happy what i'm saying but you know like <laughs> oh, there you go they, holistic on us <laughs> yes they, they they would they would heal not nice right but i think the healing is more about like the w- what you're going to do after like i do wet healing you know with um mid pads i don't know how you call that in america yeah. but yeah. yeah i do that and fantastic healings but yeah the pain stuff 
Like, you know, I don't know if you remember in Europe, we had the um, Brutal Black Project. Oh, yeah. My. That's, that's, yeah. that's all. That, 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 I hate that. that. Yeah, can I that, say, that, I hated so, uh, that. <clears throat> so this, this I really don't agree with because those guys, I, I, I know one of them very well and he's super lovely, but uh, that's, that's, that's kind of what I was bringing up. Yes. Like, that's what Man, I was asking. I was so, say, I was like, I was like, so that's not the same. Want that brutal black, bro. I'll give you that brutal black. <laughs> yeah, but this, this really, like, this, this is pure brutality. Yeah, this like, is pure brutality. That's almost scarification. Yeah. No, no, because no, no, no. It's like yo, you're, and it's like, oh, this is hard. And they're like, no, sit back down, get there, <laughs> and just get yeah. to chat and boy. I think there's like a, a part of like fetishism in that one. There is. Whereas, like, for example, um, you know, Matt Anumantra. Yes, yes, yes. So Matt will push his customers, but he pushes them with gentleness. Like my partner has a bodysuit by him. Mm -hmm. And when he, he got, I think it was his neck. He pushed him through the neck. Oops, sorry. He pushed him through the neck. And at some point he knew that Adam had reached a certain point and he left him in the room to have like a little moment alone, you know, and then they went back at it. Whereas brutal, brutal Black Project, the guys would go, you sit back, blah, 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 and insult the customer through the entire process. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's vile. But no, me, I'm like it's the gentle brutal. person being like, you want a break? No, it's not the time for the break. Let's go. You can do this. Like, I'm, I'm really like, you can do this, girl. Like, come on, you know? I think so that's those, more about the experience than, yes. uh, than the actual. Are those brutal, yes. black, mm. the brutal black artists, are they just like verbally being aggressive or are they actually like oh, no. aggressive with the There's a little too? bit of both. The, so that, yeah, that's why I was confused. Like, you, should watch, you should watch it. There's a I've good, seen like, it, yeah. you've seen the episode. It's like, it, I mean, when you see it, you can see that they're like, uh, some of the arms that they're blacking out, they're literally blacking out with like a 14 round straight across yeah. like with a liner. Very oh. scratchy. Sc scratch work, like yeah. <laughs> but like, for example, Cami, Cami Stewart, is, he used to be part of this and he does very, very beautiful black and he's, he's very nice. Um, he's crazy as fuck, like Scottish guy. And he, he does mag, like real mag, but he's, he's a brute. But at the same time, you see the guy is is enormous and he goes to the gym and he's like built, you know. But yeah, he does very very beautiful black. But yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk shit about other people there. Yeah. <laughs> no, of course. I've always found that with tattoo pain, um, as well as because I've gotten laser now a handful of times. I've always thought what helped me with any pain is biting on like a paper towel or kind of like something soft, kind of like shock therapy in a way. It, oh, that's, I, I always tell people that that's the worst thing you could do. Yeah. Really? I, it's, yeah, helped, yeah. it's helped me. Like it's, uh, every time I've gotten laser, shout out to Tim, but like uh, every time I've gotten laser done, it's like, give me a paper towel. And I just like bite what? down on it. And it just kind of, I don't know. It just kind of makes the pain bearable in a way. It's, it's a matter of like about dealing with pain. It's not so much about fighting it with something else. It's about just succumb to it. Just accept it. Accept yeah. it. Accept that this is where you're at. Accept that this is what you mm -hmm. chose and that this is what's going to happen. Yeah. I yes. think the beauty of pain with tattoo is that when the tattoo is done and you know how much pain, like I'm planning to get my ribs done soon and I'm bracing <sighs> for that. And uh, yep, I'm, I'm bracing for impact, but I know that. I know that when I look at the final product after going through that pain, it's like, you know, you went for it. It's like, you, you feel like you kind of, it's almost like when you work really hard for something and you finally get it and you feel like you earned it. I feel like when you kind of go through that pain, it almost kind of makes the tattoo more meaningful. But, but that's the point of it, isn't it? Yeah. Like that's the point of it. I have a full black torso and I went through this entire process of, uh, wanting to go through the pain for various reasons. And I remember like one of my most transcendental session, I was getting tattooed by Nathan Mould. Uh, I don't know if you, any of you know him. He does magnificent geometric bodysuits. So I had Nathan Mould on one breast with a 25 Magnum and I had Esther Garcia, um, who normally does color. And that was our first black on my belly. So the two at the same time, and I had told them before, I was like, okay, if I'm starting sobbing or crying, you just carry on. And at some point I look at Nathan and I think I gave him like puppy eyes and he stopped tattooing. He held my hand. And the moment he held my hand, I was just like, <gasps> <laughs> and Esther was like dripping sweat over me. And I told her, you don't stop. 
And at some point I was like, okay, you can stop. And then I had, I just like laughed cry for like half an hour. And they were like, are you okay? And I was just like, ah, ooh, ah. it was the best session of my life. I was so happy for like six months. Yeah. I plan on recording some of my screams during like uh, the rib tattoo and maybe like give it to some like black or death metal band to make for like, uh, like the, a... The thing is like screaming, I think makes it worse. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're, you're using up all of your energy yeah. externally, not yeah. internally. Yeah. You need to internalize your energy. A scream is like letting energy out, right? Yeah. If you mm -hmm. sit in silence and you try to find internal peace, and yeah. breathe. you can chill the fuck out. You need to quiet the mind. I'm going to try all these methods, but that's uh, all yeah. I'm saying, dude, when the worst tattoos that I've had, it's like at first, if it hurts really bad, I'm going to hysterically laugh because I know what I have to do. And yeah. it's funny. I'm like, this is <laughs> fucked up. You know, you're going to laugh, bust out laughing. And then it's just like, <sighs> try to just let it go, man. Wait. Let it go. You know what? For me, when I got my stomach done, at some point I was just breathing through it. And I don't know, you know, when you have those people, they do the Wim Hof uh, breathing. The Wim Hof breathing, yeah. Yes. And that's what I was doing. I didn't know it was that at the time. And at some point I reached that point where I, I don't know how to explain it. It just touched something and I couldn't stop crying. It was just that, that really cleansing, cleansing sobbing, you know? And I think it only happened three times when yeah, I was getting that. Cry. Yeah, it was just like that full body like ah, you know great it was fantastic the thing is i think when i get tattooed that's really what i'm looking for like a like a junkie you know like i'm looking for that and now i'm never get it so i don't get tattooed anymore because i'm just like bah, let's use this <laughs> you know i feel like because you showed me that kohi tattoo before i feel like we need to cue up some of their lyrics pain is only a pulse <laughs> if you just stop feeling it. <laughs> oh my god F fun little fact um uh, Coheed and Cambria's current bassist, Zach Cooper, uh, used to work for Alto uh, Music for my uh, father. He, oh, no, was, he was working and then uh, their former bass player got thrown in jail and he ended up getting the gig uh, for that. So Alto Ooh. was his last gig before making it to Coheed. So, nice. Wow. So, <laughs> Shout out to jail. Yeah, right. Shout out to jail. <laughs> jail hooked it up. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So I, I have a good question. Um, You've been tattooing for 19 years. Yep. You are five months into it. What do you think that you could tell him about having a good tattoo career? Please. Wow. Um, I like how you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm learning as much as I can and getting as many different perspectives as I, I can. I think it's very complicated because um, when I started, the middle of my career and now are so different. Everything has become so, so, so different. Like at the start of my career, I think I would have told you, you want a tattoo? Just do. You know, that's it. Like no matter what someone tells you, just do. But then in the middle of my career, I think I would have been like network, network, network hard and know who made what and like the elders and the history and show your pay your dues and your respect to the people who deserve it. And nowadays it's so complicated because I think probably like network and be very disciplined. But yeah. Like, yeah. I would chime into that and say social network. Yeah, but that, 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 that's what I mean <laughs> yeah, when I say network, absolutely. social like, network. network. Social yeah. network right now. It's like that's the that's the new thing. Cause I think like uh, many years ago, the way to network was to actually go out there and go to conventions and travel and meet people and yep. I meet think that all go the to right shops. people, which is still, I think, something that you should do. Yeah. I mean, you um, know, it's go, to, go to shops, do. go to shops, visit. You Back know, in the and, days, that was the thing. Around, get and, tattooed in different places, things yep. like that, you know, like, and, you know, but now I feel like. Many people just develop like great relationships, you know, online with people first. Yeah. And yeah. then you get to travel and go see to these yeah. places because you True. already like have like that mutual respect because you look at each other's work and you talk and eventually yeah. before you know it, you're like going across the pond and going somewhere else to tattoo. And I think that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I did kind of do it the old fashioned way. Like obviously social media is a necessity and you need to get it done. But for me, I was when I first thing I did was um, was get the was take the bloodborne pathogens exam just because I feel like getting that before you do anything kind of makes you look a 
a little bit more professional. I just wanted to do that before anything. And I was just going to shop after shop after shop. Um, I didn't DM anybody. I didn't write anybody on Instagram. I knew a couple people in the industry, like uh, Kevin Wilson, our mutual friend yeah, yeah, yeah. who like connected me with certain people, but I didn't really reach out to anybody via Instagram. I was just going to shop to shop to shop. And I made sure I wouldn't go there on like a busy day, like on a Saturday afternoon or something like that. I would go like on a Monday morning or something like that. And I got my apprenticeship because they were, I, I first saw the shop at the convention that they did on Pier 36. Mm -hmm. And um, I loved um, Nick, uh, who I'm learning from now. I just loved his work. He was working on this amazing back piece. And I wanted to get like a portfolio critique from him, but I'm obviously not going to ask him that while he's tattooing. So I just grabbed every business card of that convention that I could find. And I would just literally go there and show up and I would say, are you looking for an apprenticeship? Uh, or are you taking any apprentices now? And if not, is there anybody here who could just offer me any constructive feedback on my por portfolio? I would greatly appreciate it. And like, and some, some artists were very nice and giving me like, you know, a half hour to an hour of their time telling me you need to work on this. I wouldn't include this in here. I think you should change this. And then I would go home, do what they told me to do and kind of adjust the portfolio to what they told me to do. And then like reset and then go to a different shop with that. And that's great. Man. Rinse that's and, a great approach. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rinse and repeat. I think <clears throat> even though social media is obviously important, I still think that the impact you make from a human interaction and a for and making that your first impression is, I don't think that's really ever lost its charm. Absolutely. I yeah. think like uh, if I had, if I could get anybody an advice on how to get an apprenticeship, I would tell them first, go to the tattoo shop and get tattooed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Step one. Yeah. yeah. Step two, start going in there, say hello, show your tattoo healed. <laughs> show that you care. Yeah. You know? Then come back and show up one day early in the morning and say, hey, do you need anybody to sweep your fucking floors? <laughs> 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 nah, you just pissed off so many people. You know? I'm not sweeping floors. I'm not sweeping floors. <laughs> That's, I'm telling you, hey man, do you need any help? Show up when the, sh when the shop opens. Hey yeah. man, do you need any help? Yeah, they don't even have to ask Sitting me up. at the shop I'm at. Like, you just go in, you do it. Do, yeah. If you really want an apprenticeship, after you already built some sort of a rapport, then go there and offer something for nothing. Yeah, and, and what's funny yeah. is on the first day of my apprenticeship, I kind of went in there like expecting to, you know, be scrubbing the barracks based on all the stories I heard. And they're super chill there. Everybody helps out and everybody is supportive over each other. And like he says, yeah, I'm not going to make you be like the shop you know, bitch or anything like that. Oh, but, what? but, but like, I still like, they're, <laughs> I, I don't think when, when you're getting an apprenticeship, sure. You're working there for free, but also the person who's mentoring you is also working for free. They're teaching you for free. And I think the best thing you can do if they're letting you come into their shop and literally putting their reputation and on, I don't want to say putting their reputation on the line. That's kind of dramatic, but like, they're inviting you into the shop that they built. They're showing you their process. The least you could do is set up their station, uh, take down their station, and keep the shop clean. I clap to that. Yeah, they're bringing the slow clap. It's so clean, nice. Well said, said. So well you said. didn't want to say putting the reputation on the line, but in a sense, you are right. Yeah. But you are. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm. let's say you do a tattoo as an apprentice on a walk in that is fucked up. That's, now that person's going to go around like, oh, I got this tattoo at that yeah. shop. Yeah. And you know what I always thought about that? That doesn't just fuck up. Like it fucks up every tattooer in that building. Yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. You know what I'm saying? It fucks with everyone. So if you're doing bad work, man, that just talks shit about everybody at the shop. That fucks with everyone's money. Yeah. So and not even a tattoo too. Like even if, if as the apprentice, your duty is to make sure that the shop is clean and organized and everything. And somebody walks in and the place is a disaster. Yeah. Would you eat at a restaurant that like is, feels you know, like a mess? Right. Yeah. Like of course I, not. I, there's been times where I would go to a restaurant and like, it looks okay. And then I would like use the bathroom and then like the toilet is like, looks like it was just taken off of a shipwreck and <laughs> All that. Um, and it's like, it just, it's disgusting. Like I, I wouldn't want to get tattooed in a place where I'm worried about, you know, getting hepatitis, maybe because the blood more <laughs> pathogens course is still fresh in my mind. I'm still very, very overly paranoid. I've had hepatitis. A, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I've had a couple of very, very supportive friends and I'm very thankful for all the friends I have who've been Guinea pigs so far in my journey. They're letting me uh, tattoo under adult supervision again. And, uh, and there and I always like literally say, "Hey, look!" As you could see, this cartridge is brand new, and I just want you to see me unwrapping it. Like it's just 
one of those. I mean, that's cute. <laughs> that's so cute. That's so cute. <laughs> and everybody's like, give it a, give it, give it a year. He'll loosen up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it, that's one of those things. I'm like, over time, you kind of just get looser with it. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. But you know what? Like, um, maybe most people don't know, but I had seven apprentices and only one is tattooing. And this guy, I gave my shop in London when I left London. So Elliot, shout out if you watch this. I love you. Um, Elliot. Uh, yeah, I love, I love him so much. I'm so proud of him. Like I can, I, it's, he's my legacy. Uh, yeah, he took all the best of me. Um, but basically, he, when he came in, he really like came in the shop and presented himself and he looked at the shop like if he was entering this temple and it was the first time that I was seeing someone looking at the shop with those eyes. And I was just like, oh my God, I want this boy around. And also he's beautiful. So I was like, oh yeah, I want that boy around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, I'm a woman. I can like sexually harass all the boys around. It doesn't matter, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, uh, but whatever. And I took him in and after a few weeks, he was a bit complacent on a bunch of stuff and the toilets, the toilets smelled at some point, like a pub. I wasn't happy about this. And I told him the toilets need to be super nice. I have a lot of women that come in the shop, blah, 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 blah. One time, two times, third time, I made him clean the toilets with lemons, bicarbonate soda and a toothbrush. Yeah, I can Damn. tell you the toilets were never dirty again. And I went to the shop now that it's his shop and the shop has clean toilets with a little shelf with stuff for the girls, yep. you know, like sanitary pads and little like wipes and stuff. Stayed with him. Yes, it stayed with him. And I had to be hard for him to understand this. And yes, a lot of people said, oh, you were so unfair. You bullied the shit out of him. You know what? That mm. boy, two weeks ago, had his first booth at the Paris Tattoo Convention, which is invite only, mm. you know? Yeah. I, I'm so proud of him. Yeah. Because yeah. I've been super hard on him. But now he's a fantastic tattooer. He's the most fantastic networker. He organizes party. He's so committed to tattooing. I'm so proud of him. Like the, the first time that when I introduced him to Philippe Le, oh my God, you should have seen his face. I was like, hey, this is Philippe Le. And he was like, hi. And he's like, oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> like melted. <laughs> yeah, this, he's like six foot something, you know, super tall Welsh boy, you know, he, he used to be a model beautiful boy and he's just like uh, like he became as small as me i think you know <laughs> and man when you get like apprentices that are like this with this respect this respect mm. not disrespect of tattooing it's so nice yeah it really like gives me hope because nowadays you see all that new generation that just no, shit's all over yeah. what we've done you know they're just okay, using, so they're just sucking tattoo and dry again you know i help clean up and everything like that but like it's really just they're focusing on technical application with me so they're just sitting there with me i'm practicing on fake skin getting used to the machine watching them tattoo and all that and there's really like no there's no like a uh, hazing at, 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 or not that much hazing. Oh, uh, I, I think it's the best part of tattooing at the time. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that was that's the best. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been to enough hardcore shows, and uh, you know, I've gotten plenty of tough love uh, at the time. But I, 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 it, it's those are great. Those are like learning experiences that you have that you just you gotta enjoy that. Yeah, like, but it teaches you stuff. Yeah. The hazing is not just gratuitous. You know, yeah. like I know that in my era there was hazing and hazing. And it, it wasn't gratuitous, you know, like for example, with Elliot, for example, a lot of people thought that I was really, really mean to him, but now he's so devoted, he's so disciplined, he's, he's got so many values from that, 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 how hard I was with him, you know, cause like Zed was really hard on me, yeah. like really hard. And like, everybody was so hard at the time. Um, I didn't have to clean stuff, fortunately. But I'm very good at cleaning, so it would have been wonderful. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. There's hazing and hazing, yeah, you know? It, it's, it's everywhere. It, it's everywhere. I but mean, I think it's necessary in tattoo because a lot of people have a tendency to disrespect tattoo. When, when they haven't been hazed or whatever you say, they, they really disrespect tattooing. Yeah. And, they, and they treat their customers like shit. I don't know why. Uh, I can't make a parallel right now in my mind, but 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like, how was it for you? Did you both get apprentice apprenticeship? I got, yeah, I got sort of an apprenticeship. It was, it wasn't the best, but it was, a, it was like, you know. Was it, was it Els, uh, Els Angels? No. no. Or like just tattooers? Cause I, us, just tattooers. Okay. And, uh, what I think when people have hard apprenticeships, they have a certain sort of like value. You know, of, yes. of the work that they had to put in. Oh, yeah. Also yeah. of like once, it, if you get hazed by people and then you earn their respect through the course of time, there's something that changes. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I think that happens in, in so many, in so many aspects. Just, I was tattooing this baseball player and he told me that when he was a rookie that, you know, he had to get a soda, you know, shout out to AJ Burnett, bro. He told me <laughs> straight up. He's like, I had to get a soda for a guy every game before every game. Hey, rookie, where's my soda? He had to get him a soda every game. He's like, sometimes he would open the soda, take a sip and be like, it's too warm and just throw it out. It teaches you humility. I think that's what it is. It teaches Sheesh. you to be humble. So you imagine, know? you know, a season later, two seasons later, and then that guy's just like, Hey, bro, tell that rookie to get us a fucking soda, you know? <laughs> <laughs> tell that other rookie to get us yeah. a fucking soda now, you know? <laughs> it's yeah. like, I mean, and obviously those things aren't going to teach you tattooing, but I think it tests your loyalty. Like, again, I don't, I'm not experiencing. It does test your loyalty. Yeah. Yes. Again, I'm not experiencing any of that now, but if I was experiencing it, it's not going to stop me or like, you know, bring me down in that For way. For sure, it shouldn't. Because, it like, shouldn't at all. Yeah, because. I think tattooing is really such a sacred form of art to the point where like you're either passionate about there. What I think is great about tattooing is, is that I don't think it could be a hobby. I think it's either something you dedicate your life to, or you don't. I spoke with, um, I forgot his last name, but uh, Brandon, who you had on this podcast, mm -hmm. uh, I met him at uh, a show one time and I was talking with him about tattooing and I wasn't pursuing it yet, but I asked him like, Oh yeah, you know, I was, thinking about going into it. He goes, don't think about going into it. Either you're part of it, either you're doing it, or it's not like you're kind of sort of on the fence of thinking about tattooing. It's either you go for it, give it everything you got a thousand percent or just don't do it at all. You definitely just channel. So Brandon Santangelo. Yeah. Talking, yeah you yeah. definitely just channel them like the way that you just like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, really? Oh yeah. I, um, his, his uh, uh, his uh, fiance or girlfriend Anastasia, who's a fantastic tattoo artist, I've known her for like half my life. Cool. Um, yeah, and congratulations to both of them. Uh, you know what you, you just said? Um, the old spiel that I gave you basically, someone gave me something kind of similar, and that's why I'm tattooing. At the time, I was so desperate of finding a tattoo apprenticeship, and I wasn't managing. And I'm in this shop in the southeast of France, in some like other motorbike club shop and um i see this guy with facial tattoos rocking in with this beautiful chick that has like a japanese bodysuit and at the time face tattoos were not common like it was really uncommon and this guy comes in and i chat with him and he looks at me like this and he's like you want a tattoo just do it and i was just like Okay. And I didn't really know who he was at the time. And turns out now, like, I fucking love him. Uh, Laurent Maina. He had just won. At the time, you remember New York Tattoo Convention yeah. used to be like the top, right? We're talking 19 years ago. And he won best of show with the bodysuit on his girlfriend, which was like a neo-Japanese uh, bodysuit. And he had just won that, that best of show with that bodysuit. And basically, he just was like, I don't want this success. Fucked off to India for two years and disappeared. And like shot his career on the foot. Mm. And this is the guy. He was like, yep, I could do this. I don't want it. And at the time, it was such a big thing. Because he had been the apprentice of Tintin. It was like a, it was a whole thing. And yeah, yeah so this guy's like, you want a tattoo? Just do it. And yeah. I was like, okay, that's what I'm going to fucking do. Yeah. Fast forward a few years later, wow. I'm at Divine Canvas working with Zed the Head, and I see some guy rock down the fucking stairs because we were like working in the basement and it was just chaos. And I'm like, I know this guy, but I have very bad uh, facial recognition memory. And then he's like, what you doing here? And I'm like, oh, the tone of voice. And it's Laurent. And he's coming to work in the shop. And basically the tattoos on his face are from Zed. And I'm like, holy fucking shit. 
I am going to work alongside of you now. And I'm 21 years old. And I'm just like, oh, holy shit. And I'm like, okay, keep it all together. Like I go in the broom cupboard, chase the dragon. I'm like, okay, I'm full of fucking hope now and strength. But that was, that was this. You want a tattoo? Just do it. But at the time there was values that now people don't really have anymore. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit sad. Yeah. I, but I think it's not just that with tattooing. I think it's like that with anything with when people have easy access to learn anything online. Like I know plenty of people who are, who think that they're like Julia Childs right now because they saw cooking on YouTube. I know plenty of people who, <laughs> yeah, I know plenty of people who think that they're like certified mechanics because I, I think it is, the internet is a great thing. You could literally go on and see like a walkthrough or a playthrough for anything. But like at the same time, what I think with, with a, with, tattooing you're not gonna experience tattooing by watching youtube videos because there's no i'm grateful that i get to sit in when my mentor is having a consultation with the client and watching him talk to his clients and saying what's going to work what's not going to work watching how he moves his machine and how he sets up and all this like there's certain things that you're not going to experience online it's just uh, it's just a feeling maybe, maybe right. in 20 years now when you could, when virtual reality will take you to a shop or something like that. But I saw, I forget where I heard this, but it was like, man, you can put that, you know, fireplace video on your TV. It can look like there's a fire, but you're not going to feel the heat, yeah. you know, <laughs> exactly. it's, it's, right. it's not going to fool all your senses. Yeah. It's not going to be like the real thing. But right. with the exactly. internet, you're, you're lacking and the lack of um, apprenticeship, you're lacking the, the all the teaching. Yeah. All the teaching on socializing. Yeah. Uh, correct. Because uh, tattooing, the real experience of tattooing, it doesn't matter. You could be technically quite shit. Like I'm not the best tattooer. But I have super loyal customers because I give them an experience. Yes. I make them feel uh, heard, listened to, taken care of. It's like a very weird spa. Yeah. And they come back because they want that. They don't care like that I'm, I'm not that great. You know, they come because I give them that moment where they get, they get pampered, you know? And like, yeah, we have those conversations and da -di -da -di -da, and we'll build friendships and it's lovely moments that get frozen in time in those tattoos. And they look at those tattoos and they're like, ah, oh, that day we listened to that, to that true crime podcast. It was fucking awesome. Like, it's great, you yeah. know? <laughs> and I'm, I'm, that's, that's what you don't get taught by internet. Yeah. I'm grateful that like, right. not only am I learning from somebody really good, but it's like we formed a bond in a way where like, yeah. it's like, I'm thankful to say no. that like they're, that we are very supportive over each other and you're not going to get that support alone with your laptop. It's not like you're going to have anybody either encouraging you or there to critique you. There's, I can't tell you how many times where I would show them the fake skin that I was doing. They were like, cool, do it again, do it again, do it again. I've had to tattoo the same ancient geometry thing on fake skin easily a hundred times. And that's just how you get better. There's nobody to tell you that you're fucking up on on uh online that's not just a thing with apprentices too like i we talk to people who are have been tattooing for just as long as we have who work in a shop by themselves yeah. and they feel that same struggle like i don't have anybody to get a critique from and they don't get the the, the opportunity to grow quickly quickly because right. they're they're by themselves yeah and they even tell me like you shouldn't make just what we tell you your end all be all like you should continue to talk to as many people as possible learn about their stories, learn about their experiences. Um, Cause in the end, every artist has their own identity and their own story and their own journey. And you could take inspiration from all of it. And again, I don't think you get that from watching stuff online. I, and if people are learning a lot online, kudos to you. I don't, I don't really, I, I grew up in the whole age of the internet, so it doesn't really offend me as much, but I think in the end, there are certain things that the internet or technology can't, outperform and this is one of them and even with like ai like and all that stuff like i don't want a robot tattooing me i would like somebody <laughs> who i connect with uh right. putting that machine in my skin bro the next robot is yeah. gonna be a cyber me bro <laughs> <laughs> but, i'm in plug me in so that's the thing with tattooing especially like it's all about the human experience and the human connection mm -hmm. i think and one of the most important thing about tattooing initially was the community aspect of it you were an outcast and you were like 
a weirdo and you'd find like this community aspect, like a lot of like underground culture. We were talking about black metal earlier yep. and it is such a tight knit um, community. I've always said tattoo artists and senior citizens are the two communities where everybody knows each other. Well, I yeah. Think that's, the, the tattoo industry has, yeah. has grown so much, yes. right? That tattooing was kind of how we were describing it. You know, it was like that. Yes. But then as tattooing grows and tattooing wants to expand, different, expand and have different pockets of different things, like there's people that absolutely don't want to go to the shop that plays like black metal and it's dark. They want to go to like, you know, sure. they we, play T Swift and you know, we uh, talk about nails that day. Like, you know, uh, like the, we, we and play. that's good. I yeah. think for tattooing overall, because everybody needs to find their tribe and the place where they feel good and comfortable and accepted. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, I don't think that there's necessarily a, a perfect cookie cutter way of doing it, but I don't know. I'm acceptance of all ways of tattooing. Cause I think it's good for the overall, community it yeah. just sure it just it sucks though that as it grows there's always things that are outside of our control and we just have to let it see and then people are gonna tattoo for three years and so based off of that i got a question to ask the table a couple of weeks ago maybe it was last week or two weeks ago i recommended that book where are your boys tonight right and yeah, it was yeah. the history of emo music yes and basically the moral of the story of that was that emo in its prime was like really, really popular within the the genre of people who enjoy that music. Yeah. And as soon as it got mainstream is pretty much when it died. Yeah. Yeah. Do we think that's, are we in that section of tattooing right now where it's becoming oh, mainstream? Yeah. I think so. Sooner than later, it's going to die. Yeah, well, it's dying. It, it is dying. Like I, in Europe, it's very different than here. Yeah, and Europe it's not, not looking good. Great. No, not it's doing great. No, and we're sinking really hard. Like so many very big names of, but most of the legendary shops have closed and very, a lot and lot and lot and lot of big names are stopping tattooing. Like I'm, I'm on my way out. I'm preparing my way out at the moment. Yeah. So yeah, I think I have five years left in me. Yeah. Cause, I, and I don't, I don't get any new customers. None. I'm, I'm like really working on my old body suits and stuff, but they're going to run out soon. I know like I, I, in the U S I get a bunch of new people, but it's, it's really, I used to be two and a half years in uh, of waiting list. And now I'm like three months. I'm happy. And I used to be seven days a week. Now I'm three days a week and I struggle and I had to even bring my prices down and stuff. So yeah, it's been, it's been rough. Like Europe is really, really hard. I, I don't tattoo a single French person at the moment. Mm. I only have Americans, um, foreigners coming, yeah. but it's, it's rough. Uh, it's really looking bad. You have so many conventions that closed as well. So they stopped, but yeah, like for example, uh, the Mondial du Tatouage, which is Paris convention, wasn't taking any, ap any applications, right. For a long time, it was invite only. And now you can apply. Uh -oh. Before there was none of this. Are they? Wow. Are, do they have strict like requirements? Like, uh, or, yeah, okay. it, it used to be la creme de la creme, so like the best of the tattoo industry, and you'd be in, you'd be invited like personally. Okay. So being there as a European or like for most tattooers in the world, being invited there is kind of like the consecration of your career. Like you, you are the mondial. You, you, you've done it. Yeah. You know, and now you can apply. So. Uh, well, yeah, yeah it, it kind of made me a bit sad, but they still do like a great lineup but because there's a lot of oldies that don't want to go anymore. They don't want to tattoo. They don't want to do the conventions. They just- Pipe down over there. Mm -hmm. oh, they just, thing. yeah. So- this thing, um, is, this thing is falling limp on me. Anyway. <laughs> but the, the London convention doesn't exist anymore. Take you know, away. like Mickey has, Mickey has stopped that convention, but his, his business partner passed away. But you know, like there's a, it has been, it's been very strange. Yeah. It's been very strange, very I, sad. Yeah. I mean, my mentor believes that if you have knowledge of something and somebody wants to learn, you shouldn't like say no to like to them in a way where like if he's, but at the same time, like you have to show dedication to it. There was like, I'm 30 now. I was always quote unquote considering tattooing, like when I was getting out of SVA in 2016, but there was a lot that I wanted to explore. I wasn't ready to dedicate a thousand percent of my time into it. So 
it wasn't until now that I realized, okay, it's all or nothing. I want to freaking do this. The emo reference you mentioned though, I, I, as somebody who works in the music industry, I disagree that something dies because it goes mainstream. I actually like it when I like that. A lot of people know who my chemical romance is. I like that Paramore is selling out the garden. I actually think that that's a really good thing when everybody's getting exposed to the music. Um, with tattooing, I don't think, I, I feel like that's almost kind of like an, uh, a different type of situation. I think when, see, I would actually love it if the black metal bands we listen to, if people are actually into it and became something that everybody was into in a way, oh, because no. I, I, I like that. I honestly, <laughs> I would prefer that. I, and one of my favorite guitar players, uh, Dino from fear factory, I remember him, everybody was bitching cause Kim Kardashian was wearing like a morbid angel shirt. And he said, I would love it if she, somebody who is that known was wearing my t-shirts because how many people are going to go now and Google fear factory because sure. of that happens. Right. I think that, th I think, sure. Yeah. You know, like I think it's good when music goes mainstream in a way, but that's my personal opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I think like if, if tat like tattooing has already gone like fully mainstream right. in my opinion, yeah. but yeah. it's, uh, as a fan though, like I, I like niche shit. Me too. So I like it when things are well, the, undiscovered. This is what I was going to say, like right? Like when you like, see somebody now with like a full bodysuit and it looks sick as fuck, like you'd be like, wow, that took some time. Like it took some work, some determination, some planning. It was under pain. anesthesia. And then now it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, a bunch of people do that, bro. You just go get put down. You get that overnight, like you'll be right back in the morning. And like, oh, oh that didn't take any work, any passion, any pain, any of those things. <laughs> so then yeah. from a social perspective, it becomes less of a thing. It's like, oh yeah, people get those. Yeah, yeah it that's... has no value anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like if, uh, if everybody could buy Chanel, then Chanel would lose all its value. Yeah, it like I don't, value. Yeah, yeah, do you want everybody to walk around with the shit you just bought? Like at no. a really high price? No. You, you paid for it in a, like, in a different like bracket financially, you know, something that's expensive and unattainable from like the rest of the people you but know? doesn't but, a high tide raise all ships in some regards too uh, but that's the thing yeah, like yeah, yeah. Th did you did you get to experience uh, no because yeah i'm, I'm I, I, and again i've no, been five months so <laughs> I, I, i'm remember I, I was talking about that earlier with heather and um literally back in the days you'd have tattoos or a mohawk or like i don't know you, you wear chelsea or something and you cross someone in the street that had those those codes, those symbol on them, and you'd have like the nod. You know, you'd nod them and be like, "It's like the Jeep wave." You know, yeah, yeah like, it's the Jeep wave. <laughs> it's like the the what? Jeep, oh the yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have a, a Defender Land Rover, and we we like. Oh, <laughs> nice. yeah, the the Defenders you know? have a tight uh, community too. Oh yeah, it's so so much. Defenders, but that's Land the Rovers. yes, and that's the thing. Like I remember, like. The nod, you know, and be like, yeah, we're tough, I mean, you know. Yeah, we, if I see somebody with it. dreads, we give each other the nod. Yeah. The dread nod? Oh, yeah, the dread the nod. Dread that's nod? Cool. Yeah. yeah. Hey, oh, see, the dreads. Cause that's that's cool. what I'm saying, though. Not everybody rocks dreads. Yeah. And it's a very small community. And I yeah. like small community shit. That's the like, thing. Yeah. Because, because, like, usually those small communities are for people who are socially a bit inept. You don't want too many people, exactly. you know, and you want people that are just like you. Yeah. Like I want to be in my community and knowing that they're weird like me and that I can say the most horrendous dark <laughs> humor stuff yeah. without having someone being like, <gasps> me too, blah, 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 blah. Yes. Like you have to cancel that yeah. person, that you know? That was my biggest disappointment. Like, I'm, not, I'm not safe anymore. <laughs> that was my biggest disappointment with art school. When, uh, when I was in art school that uh, I thought like, I just, you know, I was the weird emo goth nerd in high school. I thought going to SVA, cool. It's, I'm going to be in a school full of weirdos now. And it was just as clicky as everywhere else I've gone. So yeah. what's funny about that, you brought that up. When uh, my, my, one of my first classes that I took in SVA, one of our instructors was like, draw a, draw like a, a character based on what you think SVA is going to be like. So I drew two people that looked very much like the characters from the gorillas. Yeah. Right? And, uh, I was like, yeah, I just picture them being like artsy and just weird looking and whatever. And then the, the instructor for that class was like, this is what you think these kids look like. I'm like, well, I, it's kind of what I expected. Yeah. He's like, dude, look around. 
and I'm looking around. Like everyone was just the most vanilla, just normal looking person. <laughs> <laughs> what did you What did you major in again, though? Illustration. Okay, if you were in the fine arts wing, it, you, that illustration that you did would have been far more accurate. Oh, yeah, okay. Trust me, it, it, you could almost tell what people were majoring in just by how they dressed or how they looked. That was something that was. Really, cool. I was like, oh, "That's a photo major right there. That's an illustration major. <laughs> that guy's in my department. I know. I'll, I'll go be friends with that guy." <laughs> what about the Jenko jeans guy? <gasps> I had those, man. <laughs> I miss them. What would he be like? What would what would his like major be? Uh, the Jenko jeans. Uh, do <laughs> I don't know. I think I think that I think that that could be miscellaneous. He, I think he'd be in film. I think it'd be film. joint rolling. Yeah. That's right. Film, film. Definitely yeah. gotta be in film. Hey, I, I, I was in cinema and audiovisual. There you go. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When I was in SVA, everybody It was, was before uni, though. <laughs> before was, uni. When I was in SVA, everybody was a My Chem fan, so everybody was just wearing a My Chemical Romance shirt. Yeah. Uh, that's how I knew they were a cartooning major, because yeah. that's what Gerard studied. Gotcha. So, um, <laughs> that's funny. Right I, I kinda, I, I'm kind of sad that I dropped out of uni, you know, like at 19, because... I wish I could have those experiences, you know? You, would I trade a minute of it for anything? Absolutely not. But they're, you know, but like with anything, they're just like with any aspect of life, there are good days and there are bad days. And there's definitely things I wish I could have done differently, but sure. you, you can't change anything. Yeah. For, for me at that point, I was just in Camden town, like taking drugs and hanging out in the weirdest parties with like people with mohawks and just it was it was random like i think I'm, i went to the school of life <laughs> yeah, I, I uh when I, I really found my niche in the city when i found the new york hardcore scene and the metal scene that's where i like met everybody that's where i was able to really make my artwork kind of like known in a way where like that's where i started my podcast that's where i started being able to do album covers and merch designs and cool. where i have people volunteering now to be guinea pigs at my apprenticeship. So it's cool. That's where you kind of like find the whole niche. John, cool. did you go to art school? Uh, just for a short bit, short bit of time. Okay. Short like bit me. Of time. No, not long enough. I asked, had somebody asked me today, I'm like, Oh, how did you get into drawing? I'm like, I just drew. I just drew. Really, <laughs> you just draw Buy yeah. books that teach you things along the way and see people draw. And I feel like you can learn how to draw. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. So before we do, Yes. Everybody, recommendations, quick. Oh, yeah, that's right. All right, let's 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 start with you, Duffy. Has, have you seen, listened to, read anything, watched whatever, just something cool that you recommend that you want people to know about um, within the last week or two? Oh, my God. I, I just read a book, but it's, it's, I don't know if it's been translated in English, but in French it's called S'adapté, and I just cried the entire time, so it was beautiful. Uh, but I'm emo as fuck. <laughs> Just, I didn't listen to emo at all. So yeah. I know nothing about emo music It's a personality whatsoever. as much as it is all right. music. Yes, so. it's a way of life. Okay. Recommendations. <laughs> uh, I'll shout out all of my friends' bands because they've been very supportive over me. Uh, check out Solemn Vision, Breath of the Moor, Dishonest Escape. This is metal? Yep, yep. What? If you like metal, there's a lot of great bands. Uh, Dead City Crown. There's so many. Sorry if I'm missing as many names as I can. I'm Trying to remember them all on the spot is very difficult. Final Siege is another one. Uh, Viserion, all great death metal bands. I've had the privilege of designing album covers for them. And uh, a lot of them have come to get inked by me, which is very nice. Oh, Death Island is another one. Be sure to check them out. Did you make a cyber death sigilism Island. death metal cover for them? No, but le mm -hmm. let's be real. Let's make a trend where pe everybody gets band logo tattoos and you make it like a nice tribal sleeve out of it. I think that there is sort of like a, a I think there is yeah. something there. Uh, that that could make that work. Uh, there is something there. <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Just anything? listen to the bands before you get angst. Funny. Uh, does it have to be like uh, anything? Like movie or maybe it could be, it could be you water and wet, bro. Anything. So check this out. I don't know. You guys might find this weird, but I find it to actually work. Buy lots of art books. You don't even have to read them. You just get better just buying his <laughs> own art books. <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 I don't know why it works, but it works. I feel just like just buy the art books, read the titles, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> full of them. <laughs> Look at the cover, you yeah. Know? Once I see the cover and I do the like the read on the back of the book that tells you like a quick summary, I'm like done. <laughs> <laughs> and I put it on my shelf. It looks awesome. 
And, oh, you know, and it looks like oh, shit, this you guy, know, it, it's this like this guy's really studied in the arts. <laughs> it's like in The Sims. Oh, Did anybody play The Sims? Oh my play God, The Sims, that, you know, and like you, game. you look at the book and your diamond thing is like yeah, yeah, up with experience, like, you know, it absorbed, like, it absorbed it. <laughs> that was the weirdest. That was the weirdest game I've ever played. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's yeah. good. It was awesome. Oh, <laughs> All right, I'm gonna recommend the movie Blackberry. I was talking to John about this earlier. If you have any kind of the sweet of the juice, the sweet of the juice, the black of the berry. The sweet <laughs> of the juice, baby. <laughs> I'm sorry, that one just flew over. It was nice. If uh, if you're if you if you got a sweet spot for nostalgia, this is definitely a good one. If you guys remember BlackBerry phones, came yeah. Out like oh yeah, oh my goodness, know, whatever. That was before yeah. my time. It was a cult, man. Oh it goodness. was a cult. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, was I never cool. jumped in there. But I was always like. You know, I was made fun of by the BlackBerry users. Yeah, I never you had one either. Blackberry? Me neither. I had a Nokia 3310. Three, yeah. Envy, motherfucker. Dude, Those I, BlackBerry, playing the snakes. You BlackBerry mother efforts. <laughs> you guys thought you were so cool. But let me tell you something. So I'm a really big fan of It's Always Sunny, right? And Dennis. Great show, by the way. Dennis is like the head CEO of BlackBerry. He, 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 he comes in and he takes over like these nerds have these little warehouse and they're building all these uh, computer equipment stuff. He comes over like a fucking badass and he just takes over. And if you want like a good, like I'm going to take charge and really take over. Like this guy's a good inspiration for that. He just kind of steamrolls the entire corporation, but he's a fucking badass. So. I got to get that book you recommended on the last episode of that, like of that business guy. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Kind of, kind of the same kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, sales badassery. Yeah. yeah. I got, I got to get that yeah, book. Like, Blackberry is pretty good. Awesome. Oh, that's good. Uh, and I just finished watching, um, true detective season four. Oh, we were uh, watching so, that last night with Eva. Uh, such a good, intense show. Just visually cool. It's as super shit. Weird. Just dark and weird. And, Oh, tons of goodies. It's right. really good. Yeah. And that's about it. We just want to give a thanks to all of our Patreon supporters, everybody who supports the show. We really, really appreciate it. Mm. There's a new person that jumped on this week. His name is Devin. So thank you, Devin, for joining on to the Patreon. If you want to be like Devin, go to patreon.com slash honest tattooer and help support the show. We haven't really done much of a after show lately. Um, I think we had some content this, this time around that we can probably throw something in. But even though there's not a lot on there recently, we appreciate everybody joining and hopefully we can start adding some more content there for you. Yeah. We thank you guys so much. Have a great night. Thank you for hanging out with us and we'll see you next week. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for having us. Bye. Peace, love and fried chicken. <laughs>